Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 53 and I am Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland and this is where I like to share my knitting practice and my knitting projects. I actually thought I didn't have too much to share but actually as I've gathered it together for today's episode I've discovered I have plenty so I'm sure we've got lots of knitting content to dive into today. Now if you've been here before you will know that uh, all the show notes are in the description box below and you'll also find a link there to my Patreon and if you click through you'll discover a post that's got slightly more extensive show notes and includes some photographs. That's free to access for everybody but you're also welcome to support me over on Patreon also so lots of goodies over there you can go and discover it for yourselves. Okay let's dive in. So I'm going to start with the card that I've drawn for us for today because I always like to draw an oracle card for us. I have drawn it from my favourite deck of the moment, <laughs> which is this one here. It's the Witch Sister Tarot by Julia Jeffrey. And the card that I've drawn for us for today is this one here. And it's the Three of Waters. So I'm just going to read you a little bit from the guide. The number three is one of the most significant in Celtic magic, and the Three of Waters expresses the cyclical resonance of the number very strongly. The salmon's incredible journey and willing sacrifice symbols the great mother goddess and her three realms of land, sea and sky. The Three of Waters is concerned with family, not necessarily biological, and the deep currents of feeling that run between people so intimately connected. One cycle is ending and a new one beginning. The three also tells us of astounding strength and singleness of purpose in the most difficult of circumstance. What gives us that superhuman strength is love. Nothing else can achieve such magic. So that's what we're, that's what we're beginning our, our, um, our episode with today. Uh, lots and lots of love, lots of connection. And yeah, diving into all of this wonderful knitting that, um, that I hope you're going to really enjoy. So let's begin with what I'm wearing. So I suspect you will have seen this before um, if you have watched any of my shawl uh, episodes. It is the Fanta Stitch by Stephen West. I've knitted it using Fonte Moustache and a beautiful skein of Ching Mohair uh, Ching fibre <laughs> mohair silk. I'll take it off to show you because it is absolutely stunning. It's one of my favourites. It's, it's also absolutely huge. Now I modified the colours for this because you might see that I have used less colours than uh, Stephen uses in the sample and um, specifies in the design itself in the pattern. But I have used this beautiful kind of smoky blue and this slightly stronger raspberry red, this kind of neutral here, and this gorgeous pale, pale pink. And then, as I say, I've also used this fabulous skein of hand-dyed mohair, which has these kind of like neon highlighter yellow pops. Can you see that? I just love it. It is very soft, very long, <laughs> and it's very fun to knit because there are so many different texture patterns to explore and then you're always swapping around your colour combinations and things. Like I said, my, my version has used less colours but I'm really pleased with how it's worked out and it's one of my most worn shawls and I particularly like to wear it in this kind of transitional season. We are having some strange weather. It's not quite spring, I wouldn't say. Well, maybe it is quite spring now but certainly it's been very cold very very windy and very very wet so i'm kind of hoping that over the course of the next couple of weeks we will get some warmer weather fingers crossed but in the meantime it is still most definitely the weather for shawls and jumpers i'm wondering i have to go out a little bit later this afternoon and i'm wondering if i could maybe get away with wearing a jumper and a shawl out there's not supposed to be any rain but it is still a bit chilly, so we will wait and see. <laughs> what you might have spotted when I took off my beautiful shawl, however, is that my finished object is on underneath. 
and this is the Snow Crocus by Midori Hirose. And this is it. Isn't it cute? I'm so pleased. So it's got these gorgeous cables that run down the front and down the back and down the sleeves with this double moss stitch texture pattern. I've got these long, long rib sleeves, which is per pattern. And I also did the neck band as per pattern also. It was such a fun construction. Uh, you began at the neck and then you built it out from there. Uh, you built the, your sleeve caps and then you knitted one full sleeve and then you knitted your other sleeve cap and your other full sleeve and then you knitted down and divided for the body. Now, in the design itself, it is designed for some positive ease and I decided that I would rather knit mine with zero ease. So I knitted a swatch. My yarn is also a little bit thinner than the one that is specified. So it took me a wee while to figure out the fabric and get one that I was really happy with. And I selected my needles. I think I used a five and a four and a half, I think either of that or a five and a half and a four and a half, but I'm pretty sure it was a five. And so uh, I chose the large size in order to get, I think it was the medium two size. And, uh, and it, so it fits me much better, I think actually around this part of my body, this upper chest area, because I'm quite small shouldered and, and larger around the full, bre full um, bust. So. Um, so I decided actually I was going to knit something that fitted me better here and I think that's really been quite effective so uh, I think it sits really nicely on my shoulders and yes I've knitted it a little bit shorter than it's specified in the pattern as well. I'll stand up again. It kind of hits me just at my natural waist. I'm teaming it up with my denim skirt today which is quite high waisted but uh, so yes it's slightly shorter and slightly more fitted than the original, but I'm really, really pleased with it. I've knitted mine in St. Magnus Orkney Angora. It is a DK weight, however, it is 200 meters per 50 grams, which you would more often associate, I think, with a fingering weight yarn, but I think with the fluff of which it is super fluffy, as you can see. You can possibly see the fibres floating around me also. <laughs> I've been assured that it does settle after wear. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it and see if it settles a little bit because it really is super, super fluffy. And there is quite a lot of fibres still shedding from it. So I'm hoping that settles down a bit. But I've knitted it in this natural colour, this white colour. Now, that's not really a colour that I knit, or not really a colour, a neutral, <laughs> that I knit very often. However, I got my colours done last year when I was visiting Jackie Rose in Wisconsin, in Madison, by Melissa Jenkins, and she determined that I was a winter. So the winter season is my colour palette, and that included white. Now, I never wear white, <laughs> or very rarely wear white. Um, I've always kind of believed that I couldn't wear it and that it wasn't my colour. But, uh, but as you can see, I think, I think it looks really nice and I'm really pleased with it. And uh, yeah, I think I would be more willing to, to experiment a little bit more with white in my wardrobe. So that might be uh, an interesting piece to explore over, or an interesting colour neutral to explore <laughs> over over summertime so we'll see but to begin with here is the snow crocus i knitted it actually because uh, jackie was doing a, uh, a knit along and classes as part of her patreon uh, which i'm a member of and so and so i joined in with that and uh, and i got to see lots of people doing these beautiful versions and lots of different colors and lots of different shapes and uh, modifications and it was really really beautiful so so yes that's what encouraged me to do it and Jackie is going to be coming over to stay with me next week and she is bringing her snow crocus so we'll be able to twin <laughs> so I'm pleased that I got it finished in time for her coming over <laughs> 
So that is what I'm wearing and that is my only finished object for this episode. Fortunately, I do still have a lot to share with you. <laughs> That's not the episode over after 10 minutes. You'd be, you'd be a bit surprised if it was, I'm sure. But what I have is this beautiful big bag here, which is my gorgeous carpet bag. I'm gonna try and lift it up, but it's got a lot in it. It's my carpet bag and it's made by The Cocoon Tree, who's my Auntie Lorna. And these aren't available on her website. Um, my mum asked her if she would make, make me one, and so she did, and I absolutely love it. And it's where I'm keeping all of my current projects. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of current projects, so we open it up and see what we've got inside. <laughs> okay, so, well, let's start Actually, let's start with this one, which is which wouldn't even fit in the bag. So, <laughs> and it's almost finished. Uh, this beautiful bag is by Needle and Fred. It was a it was a lovely gift a couple of years ago. And this is my garter goodness. Now I think I've shared this with you quite a few times now because it is an undertaking. It is a big project. I really love having a garter project on my needles. I find it very soothing. I find it a good company for when I am watching the television in the evening and I might be a bit tired and not really wanting to follow a pattern or having to keep an eye on stitch counts or anything like that. Uh, I like to have this on my, on my needles on my lap while I am, oh no, just lost a ball of yarn, it's rolled under a chair. <laughs> I like to have this as well when I am doing calls. Um, so uh, particularly for when I've got classes or um, or when I'm chatting with friends or yeah so uh, it's my it's my knitting that I bring with me as well which is becoming a little bit cumbersome because as you will see it is very big so it's basically like carrying a blanket around with me which I suppose will be what it's like when I've finished it I'll just be wearing it rather than carrying it in a bag but this is my garter goodness and of course I have so many stitches on it that it's all as we would say in Scotland, bumfled up. <laughs> but yes, we can, you can maybe see the fade that I've got going on here. So this gorgeous yarn is Loop Studio, and this is their Yin Yang base. It's 400 yards to 100 grams. And these, these are four skeins, which I have uh, faded so it's a bit stripy on that side but I think it's a little bit more slightly more subtle on that side that's the side I prefer so you can see that you've got these basic increases these eyelet increases here here and here and that's what creates the shape of the shawl which I think actually looks quite like a ginkgo leaf you know you start at the top and it kind of comes down and then it's got this lovely edge to it. It's all finished off on with I-cord at the edges and it will have an I-cord cast off. And we are coming up to the I-cord cast off really soon. I have had to do a little bit of, oh, here we go, here's the, here's the label. Loop, Loop Fibre Studio and it's the Yin Yang and these are mill ends. Uh, which I spotted at Rhinebeck and bought there. So this is going to be a Rhinebeck shawl. So that's rather fun. So I have used up basically all of the skeins so far and I've almost just finished using, used up this one. So I'm almost finished fading in my final color. Now you don't get to see like a huge amount of the final color because the, the rows are so large. So it's a, th it's a slimmer strip, but, uh, but yes, I'm gonna have to try and retrieve that ball of yarn that's rolled underneath the, the chair so I can show you, if you'll excuse me for a second. <laughs> there we go, got it. Excellent. This is the skein that I am fading in right now, and you'll see that it's very small, um, but I do actually have another ball, so I'm gonna start fading this into this because these were both parts of the same skein. And in fact, this was part of the same skein also. But I think this has got too much white in it uh, to sort of to be like an effective fade. 
and so I'm not going to be using this one for this project. So I will hold on to that. It'll be a nice little mini ball for a different project. And I'm just going to use these. So once my, uh, once my red yarn is finished, which is not going to be very long, <laughs> it's this one here, then, and these are the two that I'm striping together just now. Once this is finished, I'm going to attach this ball and then I'm going to be striping these two and then I'm going to be doing the eye cord. The eye cord, because there are so many stitches on the needle now and I don't actually know how many there are and I don't really want to count. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, once, uh, once I've knitted a few stripes, I think with this, I'm going to have to move into doing the eye cord because it is going to eat up a huge amount of yarn, I think. So, and I don't want to... I don't want to be playing yarn chicken and I do want to have enough to complete my project. So that is very nearly done and it will most certainly be done by the next episode. So uh, I'm really excited about this one, but I do suspect that I'm finishing it just as we're going to hit the warmer weather and I'm not going to get much of a chance to wear it, which is fine because then I will be casting on my next garter project. I have plans for another Soho Square, which is a beautiful design by Jackie Rose. I have ordered some lovely pearl Soho linen quill and um, I will be, I'll be embarking on another, another big garter project once this one is off the needles. Um, like I said, I do just need to have that, that kind of project as a, as a background knit almost. Uh, I find it very comforting. and. I like having something that's just a very straightforward go-to and I know lots of people knit socks I think for that purpose and certainly I would say socks are a lot more portable. <laughs> this is not exactly commuter friendly but then I don't really do a lot of commuting so that's okay. Um, but yes I know a lot of people would use socks for that for the, as their go-to but for me it's really a garter shawl so, um, so yes I'll tell you more about, well hopefully I'll be able to show you the colours and I'll be able to share you more about the inspiration for that shawl um, in the next episode. Okay, now we're gonna go into this bag and see what we have. So the next one I'm gonna show you is my most recent cast on actually. And this is the Septennial Twist by Kelly Ordman. And this was designed about three, must be coming up to four years ago uh, for Ginger Twist, uh, Ginger Twist Studio, which is my local yarn shop. And Jess of Ginger Twist uh, dyes the most beautiful colours of yarn. If you've watched this, uh, this channel before, then I've probably introduced you to some of those colours. But, um, but she, de she designed this gorgeous um, shrug for, for Jess for the seventh birthday of Ginger Twist. Now Ginger Twist had its 10th birthday last year and it moved from its very tiny bijou <laughs> premises to a much larger shop and now has a fabric room and all kinds of things. And I do have intentions to take you there and to, and to introduce you again to Jess. I think we did a summer episode uh, a couple of years ago, which was a lot of fun. So maybe we should do another one of those and then I can show you the shop as well. But this is the Septennial Twist. So it's not got a huge amount. I'm using Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair, I think it's called. And this is in the color Pink Daisy, Pink Daisies. So there is a, there's a cable, there's two little cables at either end and the rest is all just stockinette. And you knit this for quite a length and then you wash and block it and then you fold it over and you seam up for, this, for the sleeves. So then you can slip it on over and then you knit the sleeves onto the, onto the shrug. So uh, I tried it on, I tried the sample on in Ginger Twist when I popped in there the other day there and I just loved it. So this is where my confession comes in. <laughs> this was supposed to be something else entirely. I had another project planned, I had the needles looked out for it, I had it all ready to go. And then I've not cast that on, I've cast something else on entirely different. So this was going to be uh, a Miro Menil 
by Cleonis, Cleone, uh, which is a, which is a beautiful pattern, and I still really want to knit that. I tried on Jackie's when I stayed with her last year, and I really liked the fit, and so I really still do want to knit that for myself. But this kind of captured my heart, and so you know I think we need to we need to knit with our joy, don't we? So <laughs> so that is where I've gone. So. This is, as I say, the septennial twist. There is a long version and a short version. I am knitting the long version and it uses five millimeter needles. I'm using my red laces because it's uh, just knitting flat and it's actually, I find it easier to knit flat using the fixed circulars from Chai Gu um, because it this has a stainless steel core so it's not got, um, it doesn't have memory. So if I wind it up to put it away, it doesn't then hold that twisty shape. It, it, still, it still stays straight. So it makes it very easy to knit flat. So I prefer to knit most of my shawls on these red laces. Uh, and uh, they've got special lace knitting um, tips as well, um, which are slightly sharper, which I quite enjoy too. Um, but yes, that makes it, I think, a little bit easier to knit, knit back and forth. So, as I said, I didn't start this very long ago, and so I've not made an enormous amount of progress. But I have made some progress, and it's now that I know what I'm doing with it, now I know the repeat. It's really very simple and really very straightforward. Here is the yarn. This gorgeous yarn. This is the merino here, and this is the, the mohair that I'm holding together, Pink Daisies. This is my Christmas gift from my parents. They popped over to Copenhagen before they came to visit us for Christmas. And, uh, and this was my beautiful gift. So I'm so enjoying knitting with it. It's, um, it's a really lovely soft yarn and the soft mohair is indeed very soft. What's it called again? Here we go, soft silk mohair. So yes, does what it says on the tin. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's another project. And I have already looked out yarn to do a second. So this tells you how committed I am to this project. <laughs> and this is yarn which was um, gifted to me by Ruth from the podcast Ruth Loves to Knit. And uh, she, I think she used to live quite close to the J.C. Rennie woolen mill um, up north. Uh, she now lives down south. But uh, she sent to me this beautiful package of yarn. And I've used a little bit of it. Um, oh, I used it for my Ilya sweater, which is a gorgeous design by Caitlin Hunter with a sort of cowl neck and then some colour work. It's actually a jumper that I wear an awful lot because it's a, a lovely warm one and I, and I really love how this particular yarn feels up next to my neck. And the yarn itself is uh, JC Rennie Super Soft DK. It's 100% wool, it's 50 grams and it is 171 meters per 50 grams. Um, so again, you know, a little bit on the lighter side, I would say, of a DK, but I think that'll work really well for the septennial twist because that requires you, you use the fingering weight held with the mohair. But I think if I just held this single, then I think I would get a very similar weight and I have enough yarn. So I actually have enough yarn to do another long one. So I'm going to knit the long one first and then see what I want to do, whether I want to knit a short black one or a, or a much longer one, I'm not sure. So decisions to be made, but I do have options because I have enough of that yarn to do both. So, or to do either, not to do both. <laughs> so there we go, that's a septennial twist by Kelly Ordman. And she is an Edinburgh based designer. She's actually designed some other really beautiful patterns for Jess. In fact, I think there are also the septennial mitts. So maybe if I knit the, um, the short black septennial twist, I'll be able to knit some mitts to match. We'll see. Okay, so 
that's another project that I'm working on that's bringing me a lot of joy. This project bag is another cocoon tree one and I am, um, it's holding this most beautiful project that is, that I'm completely obsessed with. <laughs> and I'm obsessed with it because of the pattern and I'm obsessed with it because of the yarn. So let me show you what I have. This is the Artist Shawl by Natasha Hornby, who is Moonstruck Knits. And it's knitted in North Bay fibre. This uh, gorgeous yarn, this is Elemental Sport, and it's 100% Cormo. I am so in love with this yarn. It was very kindly gifted to me by Jill, who's the, the creatrix behind North Bay Fibre. She shared, uh, she shared a number of kits that she had put together for the artist shawl and I absolutely fell in love with this one and she very kindly popped it in the post and sent it to me. And not only that, but she's very kindly given a discount code for you, which is 10% off site-wide if you use the code AMY10. That's A-M-Y, all upper, um, What's that word? <laughs> uppercase. All uppercase letters. Capital letters. A M Y. <laughs> 10. 10. <one, zero. laughs> and you will get 10% uh, off site wide, and that is good until the end of May. I cannot recommend this yarn enough. Look at this stitch definition. And what I will tell you is, is that. When I first received the package with the yarn and I opened it up and I felt the, the hanks of the yarn, I already knew that I loved it. It is springy, it is it's joyful, it's like, it's like it wants to dance on your needles, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and it's very soft, but it's not that kind of cotton wool soft that I think you sometimes get from, from Merino. There's a little bit more, there's a bit more texture to it, um, but still incredibly soft. Uh, absolutely, you're not gonna have, well, I certainly, I'm not having any issues at all holding it next to my skin. It's just, yeah, just really lovely. Um, it holds the stitch definition so well. I'm so impressed with it. Uh, so yes, I, I loved the feel of it in the hank, and then I wound it into the cakes. And I'll show you one of them here. And I loved it even more. It was a joy to, to, um, to cake up. And these little cakes are so, I don't know, they're so dense and squishy. <laughs> they're just lovely. And the intensity of the color is just, that the fiber has taken the color so beautifully and it's matte. But it's not, um, it's not a, like a flat color. There's a, there's a density to it and an intensity that I'm really appreciating. So I knew I loved it in the hank. I knew I loved it in the cake. And oh boy, do I love it on my needles. <laughs> so, so the artist shawl begins with this texture waffle stitch pattern. And like I said, this, this yarn is just working so beautifully for the st stitch definition. And then we move into this uh, one by one stranded color work section, which does require you to do a little bit of uh, color work on the wrong side, but because it's just this one by one, you actually get into a real rhythm with it. Uh, and actually, as I was knitting uh, the stranded color work on the wrong side, I was thinking this is actually much easier than I expected it to be. I've not done a lot of color work knitting on the on the pearl side, um, and actually I wouldn't be I wouldn't be put off by a project now that uh, that requires that. Uh, I feel quite confident that I'd be able to do that and and to get like an even tension because I'm pretty pleased with my tension. There, I can show you on the back as well. There's my. There's the back of the, the project, and I, I think those floats look pretty good, pretty even. Uh, so I have now finished this first initial section, and I am now into the mosaic border. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> 
that just makes me so, so happy. I haven't realized I haven't told you what the colors are. This color here, which is like a, a very light pearly gray, is called Coho. The beautiful pink is called Lotus. The red is called Holly. And then I have two other colors, one that I showed you already just now. This is called Rock Bottom. It kind of is presenting as black, but when you look at it in person, it's, it's not exactly black. It's like a very, very, very dark, smoky grape, maybe. Black grape? Not sure. Or maybe like a dark aubergine or, you know, some something like that. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. I just love it. And then I've also got a skein of the natural. So that's my, that was the colors that came in my kit. And I'm going to be, I think it's, I think I start next with the natural and then go into the black and then finish up again with the, well, I think I also have a little bit more of the, the coho and then the lotus and the holly are going to come back in towards the end. Oh, I can't wait. I just want to knit on this all the time. <laughs> But I can't because I do have to pay attention because this is mosaic knitting. So if you haven't knitted um, mosaic before, it is super simple. Do not be put off by it. It is um, a lovely, effective way to, to work your colour work because basically you're only ever knitting with one strand of yarn. So you're either, and you, you've got a really clear chart that shows you which colour you're going to be starting that row with. And you're going to knit back and forth with that one color, if it's if it's knitting flat. And you're gonna knit some stitches and you're gonna slip other stitches with your yarn held to the back. And so that means that you're bringing up the color from the row below into the current row. So uh, so then when you knit back along, you, you just follow, you just knit your knit, knit the, the color that you're knitting and you slip again with your yarn held forward so all your floats stay at the back and you get your color, gorgeous color at the front. So it's, like I said, it's a very simple color work technique, but very, very effective and very, very fun. So I am just absolutely in my element with this project. And uh, yeah, just a lot of joy. Uh, like I said, there is a discount on the North Bay Fibre website. You're looking at Amy 10 for your 10% off site-wide until the end of May. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jill, for this beautiful kit. I am, honestly, I'm in raptures. <laughs> so, so there we go. That is my artist shawl by Natasha Hornby. And I'll pop that in there and I'll pop this in here. Okay. We're gradually emptying out the bag here. What do I have for you next? Uh, oh, we're nearly, we're almost done actually. Well, maybe not, <laughs> almost. Uh, this is actually a cast on that I haven't, as you can see, we're all set to go, but we're not quite there yet. But I had a little bit left over. I had a little bit of yarn left over from the snow crocus. So I had some of the Titicaca in the color Ecru, which is 100% alpaca, and it's a, just a truly sweet. I think it's 400 meters per 500 grams. And then I had another skein, another ball untouched of the Magnus DK, and I think it's just in the color natural, yes. So I'm gonna be holding these two together, so same fiber, same fabric as I've got here, except I'm going to knit it with a four millimeter needle so the fabric will be a bit denser. I already have that looked out and all set to go. <laughs> and I'm going to knit myself a Beast Beast Beret. Now, this is a pattern by Sari Nordland. I have knitted quite a few of these. I really enjoy them and I really enjoy wearing them. I think I much prefer that shape of hat to a regular beanie. It's um. Yeah, it just feels like it's my style. So uh, I'm going to knit myself a gorgeous little beast beast beret to go with my gorgeous snow crocus. So maybe I will have that done by next weekend 
to wear to the Wooly Good gathering, but more about that shortly. Um, but yes, that's it's, it's not a lovely project bag. This is my <laughs> IKEA freezer bags. I tend to keep um, a lot of my yarn, well, almost all of my yarn, in IKEA freezer bags in my stash. And that's just to make sure that they, they stay uh, moth free <laughs> and to protect them. Uh, I don't have them currently, <laughs> and hopefully in the future, I don't have a, a moth problem in my home. Uh, I have had moth problems in previous homes. And so I'm very, it's something I'm very aware of and something I'm very cautious of. And so uh, a lot of my, uh, a lot of my yarn gets kept in plastic bags just to just to keep it safe and then sometimes those bags will sit inside um, project bags but uh, but yes it's just to try and try and make sure that I protect my my beautiful yarn because it's always it's a very sad thing when it's uh, when it's not protected but yes this is going to go in this little bag here one of my favorites there we go so I'm going to pop that down at my feet just now. Now I've got two blanket projects to show you. So I'm going to show you this first one because it actually speaks to um, knitting plans which are not necessarily in the in the very near future but um, you know life has a way of running away with you doesn't it so I, I think uh, these plans will probably have to hop on the needles sooner than, than later. Now you might, might remember a few episodes back, I shared with you a brioche design that I was working on and I called it the Fiery, the Fiery Wrap. And Fiery is an old Scots word for friend. Oh, I'm losing all the mini balls. So it's knitted up using the beautiful yarn that my mum gave me for uh, for Advent. And these are river knits. But I think I'm showing you the wrong side. Let me show you the right side. <laughs> these are river knits and they are BFL minis. They are a delight to knit with. And I came up with this, this wrap design which just has a very basic brioche stitch and it's divided up with garter. And the idea was, was that if you hadn't knitted brioche before, then this might be a really good project for you because it's got relatively straightforward. It's got quite a lot of practice uh, built into it. So you, you can you know, practice the stitch lots. It has very basic increases and decreases you can see at either end, which then create the shaping so that you end up with a wrap that's on the diagonal. And then you have these sections here, which are garter. So I tend to find that if, you've, if you break it up, if you break up a more complex pattern or stitch pattern with a little bit of garter, then what it means that if you mess up <laughs> and you need to rip it back, then it's like you've got um, it's like you've got a break in the knitting, you know. It's like you've got um, a place where you can like pull your yarn, pull your knitting back to, and you can just put your put your needle back through, um, back through your stitches, um, because it's like such a straightforward bit, and sometimes it can be a bit harder to to rescue brioche um, if you have to if you have to rip it back and you're not accustomed to knitting. Um, knitting that stitch. So as you can see, I've knitted quite a lot of this already. It's absolutely massive. So my intention for this is actually to make it into a blanket rather than making it into a wrap that you would wear or something that you can like cocoon yourself up into. And I would like to release this pattern uh, towards the end of this year so that it's maybe a pattern that you can knit with, a, with an advent calendar that you might be working with in December. So to that end, I have purchased myself an advent calendar. And this will be the first one I have actually bought for myself. I have bought one in the past for friends and my mum and I uh, tend to gift each other advent calendars, but with quite often ones that we've put together ourselves. Um, so this is the first time that I have 
kind of researched and found a yarn dyer that's doing an advent in a color story that really suits my winter palette and that was important for me this time round. Um, I wanted to have a sense of what the colours were going to be and that they were going to be colours that would suit me and colours that I would actually enjoy wearing even although I guess it's going to be a blanket to be honest I, I wear I think <laughs> I think most of my garter projects are, are blankets that I get to wear so <laughs> um, so yes, I have ordered a beautiful advent calendar from Blue Fern, Blue Fern Wool. Oh, I wrote it down. Blue, where is it? Blue Fern Yarns. And I have ordered this in their Yak base. I, I know that Yak has a slightly darker uh, base colour. Um, in the natural fibre, so it tends to create like a, a sort of a darker, sort of moodier, um, moodier colour palette, uh, which is, well, suits me. I am uh, a sultry winter <laughs> for my colour scheme, for my for my house of colour uh, palette. And so I chose the, the yarn, the yak base for that. And the theme is apothecary. And it just really kind of captured my imagination and her picture boards were really kind of beautiful jewel tones of cobalt blues and magentas and um, dark pine greens and all of those kinds of colours. Um, and so I just, I, it really kind of attracted my eye and I thought those are colours that would really suit me and I would enjoy wearing and I would enjoy knitting. So I have ordered that, um, I've ordered that advent and so I'm really excited about it. And my, like I said, my plan is to, to work on this uh, on work on this wrap, get the the pattern sorted, and uh, and release it towards the end of this year before the before December, um. So that if you would like to to explore uh, a very comforting brioche project on your needles, over over the Christmas period, then then maybe that's something that might appeal to you too. So there we go. That's um. Oh, and I should say this is a beautiful. Uh, project bag, embroidered project bag by Pajauta Knits, who I think is uh, Portuguese. And this was a lovely gift, birthday gift um, from uh, my friend Alexandra. So there we go. That's, that's what that's been resting in. And I really haven't worked on it at all for a good few months now. So uh, in fact, I don't think I've worked on it since about January, February. It has been a very busy time, but I will tell you a bit more about that shortly some of my other mini balls that have all kind of unraveled a little bit in the in the bag so um so yes it's been a very busy time but i'm hoping that i'm going to get some time to to work on this now so one last project to share with you i've managed to whip through things pretty quickly here uh, and that is a crochet project and that's saying in this lovely <laughs> Love, lovely basket that kind of sits down the side of my of my sofa so I can just pull it out whenever but uh, I decided that I wanted to knit a, and it's just a granny a straightforward granny stripe blanket so I am holding two strands together and these are both from Wooly Knit and this is their Wooly Knit fingering weight in their British wool in the colourway Harvest. And then this is the same yarn but plied with a single ply natural cotton. And I'm holding the two of these together for my for my crochet blanket. I am not a natural crocheter. I, it takes me quite a long time to do. I am just doing like a row every now and then. So it's not knitting up, it's not knitting up, it's not crocheting up particularly quickly. The other thing I would say is that I had a lot of trouble getting started and so I ended up knitting my, <laughs> knitting my starter. So I basically cast on all my stitches and then I cast off all my stitches so that basically I then had this long strip of, um, <laughs> well, not even one row of knitting and uh, and I used that as the base to begin my 
crochet blanket because for whatever reason I just could not it was a stressful time <laughs> I just needed it to be easy and it wasn't be, it wasn't behaving so that was my workaround <laughs> so uh, so yeah this is what happens when a knitter approaches crochet <laughs> But I do like how it's knitting up, and the reason why I'm knitting it, oh, I'm knitting it. I do like how it's crocheting up, and the reason why I'm crocheting it <laughs> is that uh, I really want a blanket for this room. Oh, I should just say I'm using a four and a half millimeter uh, hook, and it's just very slow progress, and it's just a very basic uh, granny stripe blanket, and I'm using the I'm basically using the pattern from Attic 24. I will, but as with all of the things that I've mentioned, all these beautiful projects, uh, I will leave the links uh, in the in the description box below. But the reason why I'm knitting this blanket, like I said, is to go crocheting. Goodness me, Amy. The reason why I'm crocheting this blanket <laughs> is because I want it to go in this room now, you'll probably have noticed that I'm not podcasting in my usual, my usual space. And that is because, and also you might have noticed too, is that there haven't been a whole lot of episodes recently. And the reason for that is because our home has been in complete uproar. And I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, um, but we were approached by, uh, by Changeworks. That's an organization that works with the government and they offered to retrofit insulation into our home uh, for free. So that was an amazing offer. It is going to make a huge difference to our home. Our building was built, I think, in the 18, 1880s, 1890s. So it is an old, an old tenement building. Um, it doesn't actually have insulation. But ours does now because we got it all fitted and then because of that we took the time then to to redecorate the whole the whole home not including the bathroom and the kitchen those are other stories and we will approach them when we approach them but the rest of the home <laughs> we managed to we managed to sort and um and design and, and redecorate in colors that that really make us happy so this is my living room this is the room that sits at the front of my property. It looks out over the over the harbour, over the water, out across towards Fife. And it's a beautiful room. It was painted previously by the previous owners who had a lovely aesthetic. It just wasn't ours. Um, but they had painted it in a very dark grey, or kind of mid-grey, I should say, not very dark grey. Uh, they, they painted it in a mid-grey. But this is a north facing room and so the sun never quite comes around far enough in order to come fully into the space. And also because of that, the, the light that comes in here is a very cold light. And so I didn't really enjoy sitting in here very often because it was so, because of the grey on the walls and the cold light. But now we've painted it this gorgeous dark red, which you can see. I've got some beautiful fringed lampshades. I've got some really lovely wooden pieces, uh, wooden furniture and things. I've got my fairy lights up. Um, I've got my books through here. Um, it's become a really lovely place to sit. I think it's become my favorite place to sit, actually, to sit and knit on my yellow sofa. So, uh, so yes, I'm thinking a beautiful crochet blanket would be the perfect home accessory for this space. Um, I just don't expect to have it anytime soon. Maybe I'll have it for the winter time and that will be perfect. <laughs> we'll wait and see. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just taking it very easy. It's one of those background projects. I crochet a row sometimes when, I, when I'm having my morning cup of tea and then I put it back in the basket and then I don't look at it again for the rest of the day. But that's fine because it's just a, it's just a gradual project. So yes, that's uh, I think that's all the knitting and all the projects. So I think I'm just going to go on to what's bringing me joy. And one of the things that's been bringing me joy has been the home redecoration. But more specifically, I think having finished the home decoration, a huge amount of creative energy went into you know getting this place the way that we wanted it. And we're very happy with it, but I'm also very tired. <laughs> So it's taken, like I said, just a lot of energy and a lot of effort. But 
it has really brought a lot of colour into our home and that makes me really happy. So the, the dark red is the colour in our living room. Um, in the room where I would usually be podcasting, it's a lovely sunny yellow. And in our bedroom, it's a gorgeous terracotta. And in the box room, now, I don't think most people know necessarily what a box room is, but a box room is found in Scottish tenements. And it's a room that's often in the center of the home and will have no uh, natural light. It won't necessarily have any windows. And it would generally have been used as a bedroom uh, in the past when, um, when these homes were more were more populated than they are now and also because it was a warm room because it was at the center of the home and it didn't have the didn't have the drafty windows uh, so we don't generally use well sometimes people still use the the box room as a as a bedroom most people will use it as a cupboard a large storage area or as an office quite often we'll get used as an office ours is used as um as a place to store my my yarn collection <laughs> so so my stash lives in the yarn in the in the box room and uh we managed to paint it this gorgeous inky blue shade that i'm just absolutely in love with so so yeah like i said we've really managed to bring a lot of color into our home and that's certainly bringing me lots of joy the next thing that's been bringing me lots of joy was that I got to go to the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase and that was a few weeks ago now but this is the first time that I've managed to to podcast since. That coincided with the launch of the The Gither Cowl and that was knitted in the Scottish Yarn Festival Custom Blend 4-ply and so it was lovely to be able to launch it there with the yarn available and uh, it was extremely well attended. Oh dear. <coughs> I think I'm getting some angora fibres in my throat. <laughs> it was extremely well attended. In fact, it was sold out for the second year in a row. There were beautiful yarns there, lovely people, great producers. It's just such a fabulous event. It was held at the Dewar Centre in Perth. Uh, that's the last of the events that's going to be held in the Dewar Centre. Uh, for the Scottish Yarn Festival or the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase uh, because they are moving venues because I think this the future of that of the Dura Centre is a little bit unknown right now so for stability's sake <laughs> they are moving to a new venue which I think is called the Errol Showground uh, which is between Perth and Dundee and I think there's lots of plans in the in the offing now for for people to arrange their their transport and things that's going to be happening in September. But yes, before we get to there, the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase was in March, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, I didn't manage to to buy very much. Well, I didn't buy anything. Um, I was actually doing the designer pop up, so I was there from one till four, um, in the hay room and people came and visited and got to see my samples and I got to meet some lovely viewers. If that is you, hello. <laughs> it was so lovely to meet you and it was just joyful, it is, as it always is. And it was lovely to see people, it was lovely to share my designs with people and, and also to meet the other designers too. So, so that was really lovely and I, like I say, I really, really enjoyed myself. But I didn't get much of an opportunity to have a look around or to purchase yarn for myself. However, um, Susie of um, Lammer, Muir, Lammer Muir Wool, which is a yarn producer very close to Edinburgh and uh, very close to my heart, uh, gave me a gorgeous skein of her Simply Shetland double knitting. So this is a soft wool spun pure fluffy Shetland wool from our own sheep and local flocks. Each year's dip provides just enough for a limited amount of yarn produced with love. And this is hair stains grey and it's about 260 metres per 100 grams. And look at that, it's got a gorgeous kind of heathered, it's, na it's all natural, it's not, none of this has been dyed, but it's got this lovely texture to it. Shetland yarn is just so, ah, oh, it's just so soft and so bouncy. And it still feels like a lit, like it feels like wool 
Do you know, it still feels a little bit slightly rustic, but not not um, not scratchy or anything like that at all. It's very soft um, and just delightful. So I am going to start swatching with this and explore some design options for Laramure wool. So that's why that's why Susie gave me this skein. So I'm looking forward to having a little explore of this over the next couple of months. So that was the only that was the only skein that came home with me from the wool producer showcase. However, I saw lots of people going home with uh, with lots more than I did. <laughs> so very jealous of them. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I got recently, which I wanted to share with you, was these little beautiful cards. Now, Mary Lunnan is a wonderful coach who is based down in the south of England. And she's got a business called Dare to Blossom. And she produces, as part of her business, she produces these amazing cards. And these are called the Time For You cards. And when I saw that she'd brought these out, um, I, I hopped right on it and I purchased myself uh, one of the very first, one of the very first um, editions, or not editions, printings, that's it. <laughs> so these are beautiful little cards like this. They're, and they've all got a different creative verb on it. Oh no, I've dropped them all on the floor. <laughs> they've all got a different word on it and different colors. That's one of my favourite words. Um, they've all got different words. These are all doing words. They're all verbs. And so the idea of it is, is that you can just draw yourself a card and you can then maybe take that into a journaling practice or in you might be able to, to take it into... Um, well, what I quite like to do is I like to draw a card and then it becomes something that I think about throughout the day. And uh, when I'm involved in, I don't know, just my general household chores or whether I'm doing my work or I'm just kind of noticing how that word is playing through. And so I have a beautiful little wooden dish that I keep in the hallway. Float. Uh, sway. <laughs> uh, I have a beautiful little wooden dish that I keep in the hall and I like to just keep them there and then I draw one card as I'm passing. <laughs> and it makes me makes me smile dance so visualize so just some great words that um yeah that just kind of prompts and uh yeah invite invitations into into reflection and into creative practice and into into doing <laughs> so there we go that's that's from Mary Lennon and I will leave the link to that in the um in the drop box below what else? Oh, Shea and Blue. I got myself some perfume. I, be I, I really like perfume. I've always really liked perfume. But um, the perfume that I've been really loving and using for many years was Terre de Lumiere by L'Occitane. And unfortunately, they have discontinued. And so this happens to me on occasion. <laughs> I, get, I find like the scent that is my scent, uh, the perfume that I really love. And then eventually it gets discontinued and then I have to uh, I have to find a different one. So I've been kind of trying to loosen up my ideas around just finding one perfume and sticking to it all the time. And so I purchased some Shea and Blue perfume. Now, I had originally received a Shea and Blue perfume in my Marks and Spencer's advent calendar that was gifted to me by my friend Jen from my birthday a couple of years ago. And it had the perfume Tallulah's Camellia in it. And I kept it in my handbag because it's quite a, it's a 25 mil bottle. So it's just quite handy and it just pops in the handbag. Um, so I was familiar with them. And so I think they popped up on my Instagram as an advert and I was like, I might just choose another one. So since then I've chosen a few. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've actually signed up for their monthly subscription club. This is not an advert, by the way. This is, this is just me um, liking things and, and purchasing them for myself. So, uh, so the most recent one has just arrived and it's called Black Tulip. And it's a really lovely kind of berry. Oh, 
really like this one. It smells like berries and um, and deep florals. It's a, it's a really lovely scent. I'm very pleased with this one. The other ones I've tried are Amber and Oud, which I also like. And the one that I really, really like, however, is from Framboise Noir, uh, Black Raspberry. And uh, I think I'm gonna be getting a larger one of the Framboise Noir because uh, that's my that's my winning scent at the moment. However, I just, this just arrived yesterday and I do really like this. So. So yes, I'm, I'm enjoying exploring scents and perfumes and, uh, and what that kind of brings to, brings to my, my outfit, you know, and my way of being in the world and just kind of, yeah, just like, like a sensory pleasure. So, so yeah, I thought I would share that with you too. Uh, what else do I have? Oh yes, what's Bring Me Joy? Jackie and Ivana. So Ivana from Republic of Me podcast and Jackie from Jackson Rose are coming to Edinburgh next week. And I cannot wait. I am so excited. So um, we are going to be going to the Woolly Good Gathering, which happens that weekend, that following weekend. So not this weekend coming, but the one after. In fact, I've just seen that tickets are running low and they are recommending that if you are intending to come along that you purchase your ticket now. I think there will be tickets on the door, but not till later on in the day. And uh, I think at that point, ticket prices will be getting reduced for the last couple of hours of the day. Um, so that's something to be aware of if you're wanting to come along, but, but you think um, the, the ticket price is, is prohibitive for you, then um, then it's it's nice that they're they're making that accessible. So. Um, so yes, they're coming over. We're going to go do that. We've got lots of other plans as well and um, lots of places that I want to take them to and uh, I just think we're going to have so much fun and yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll do a podcast together. Maybe we'll fill you in on the events and um, that I think that would be a that would be a lot of fun. So maybe we'll bring you along for some of our some of my plans, <laughs> and I'll take some I'll take some footage and share that with you too because I think that would be a lot of fun to have you along as well. Uh, so yes, really good gathering happening next, not this coming weekend but the next weekend, um, which is the last weekend of April. I uh, I was invited to contribute a few samples to their atelier. So there's going to be a space within the venue where you can go and try on and check out some samples from local designers. Uh, I know that Rebecca Klo will also have some designs there too. So you can go and check those out in person. And uh, yeah, so I think that, that will be a lot of fun. So uh, I think there's there's lots of things happening and uh, lots of wonderful vendors and uh, I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. Uh, other things bring me joy? Well, my third module of my astrology class is starting next week as well. It's going to be a busy week next week. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, that will be the last module of the foundation of the diploma course that I am currently pursuing for accreditation for my astrological work. And I have a wonderful class. I have great teachers. I am so enjoying this course. It's run by the Faculty of Astrology, the Faculty of Astrological Studies, which is based down in London. They are also the ones that organise the annual summer school down in Oxford that I went to last year and which I'll be going to again this year. And uh, this third module is where we start to synthesise everything that we've learned in module one and module two. So it's, uh, it's the module where everything kind of comes together. I actually just got my feedback on my homework for module two, and it was really lovely. And I'm really pleased with how, with how I'm progressing with that. So, so yeah, that's also bringing me joy. So I thought I'd just finish up then with like the three things that we're watching on TV right now, in case you're looking for some recommendations. We're actually watching three very, very different shows. So the first one we're watching is Shogun, which is on Disney Plus. <clears throat> and it's getting quite a lot of positive buzz. And I completely understand why. It is a visually stunning, beautifully acted, compelling story. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm just, 
I'm in love with it. It is very powerful. Um, and yeah, I, it's, it's, a, it's an intense narrative. Um, and it's, it's obviously, it's not a new story. It's been, this is a story that's been told before, but, um, but it's, but what we're able to do now, and I think the way in which they've done it is just, a bit, like I said, very compelling. Um, and I'm really enjoying that. Something else I'm really enjoying is The Dry, which is on STV. It's got two seasons. We've finished the first season. We've just started on the second. It's, I think it's, I think it's, um, advertised as a comedy. I don't think it's a comedy. I think it's more of a drama. Um, it's about a woman who's in her thirties, who's been an artist in London, and she's come back home to Ireland to her family um, because she's an alcoholic and she's going through her meetings and she's got a sponsor and it's about how she's kind of navigating uh, life um, on the on the other side, well not on the other side of addiction but through addiction and um, and yeah so that's really, I, I really enjoy that too, it's, again it's got brilliant characters in it, uh, all of the the acting in it is, is brilliant and but it's, I mean, it's very, very different from Shogun. So, <laughs> so we've got this kind of like this sort of fam contemporary family drama, epic period um, narrative, uh, and then we've got the third thing that I'm watching on TV, which is Eugene Levy's The Reluctant Traveler, where Eugene Levy goes to to various different uh, beautiful hotels based around Europe this time <laughs> in the second season. And uh, and he's just very endearing, and the places that he visits are very beautiful, and the people that he meets are really interesting and warm and friendly, and it's just very gentle. Do you know? Sometimes you just need something that's really gentle and light-hearted, and for me, that that really kind of um, that really does it. So. Those are the three very different things that we're watching on TV just now. Uh, the Reluctant Traveller is on Apple TV. Uh, as I said, The Dry is on STV or ITV um, for the rest of the UK. And um, I'm not sure whether it's on BritBox. That might be something to investigate if you're interested. And Shogun is on Disney+. Plus. Okay, so are you ready for a poem? Because I've got a lovely poem for you. Let me find my phone. <laughs> and this is a poem that kind of really speaks back to the opening card because it's all about the salmon. So this is Song for the Salmon by David White. For too many days now, I have not written of the sea, nor the rivers, nor the shifting currents we find between the islands. For too many nights now, I have not imagined the salmon threading the dark streams of reflected stars. Nor have I dreamt of his longing, nor the lithe swing of his tail toward dawn. I have not given myself to the depth to which he goes, to the cargoes of crystal water, cold with salt, nor the enormous plains of ocean swaying beneath the moon. I have not felt the lifted arms of the ocean opening its white hands to the seashore, nor the salted wind, whole and healthy, filling the chest with living air. I have not heard those waves fallen out of heaven onto earth, nor the tumult of sound and the satisfaction of a thousand miles of ocean giving up its strength on the sand. But now I have spoken of that great sea, the ocean of longing shifts through me. The blessed inner star of navigation moves in the dark sky above, and I am ready, like the young salmon, to leave his river, blessed with hunger, for a great journey on the drawing tide. Oh, well, I hope you loved that poem as much as I did, and I hope it sends you off out into the world, <laughs> onto the seas of your high seas of your creativity. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I will be back hopefully a lot sooner than I was the last time. Maybe with some special guests, we will wait and see uh, how, our, how our time together unfolds uh, with Jackie and Ivana's visit. But, uh, but in the meantime, know that I'm wishing you happy knitting and that I will speak to you as soon as I can. You take good care. <laughs>